And I'm actually going to be making tomato basil soup in our amazing gloss cooking blender. This is like so amazingly easy and it's so good. Um, I realized, I'm like, you know what? I think I might make a batch tomorrow too and put it in the freezer. So, um, so hey, it works great to make ahead and put in the freezer. Um, so that way, you know, when you want tomato soup, it's good to go. Um, and I must tell you, I am not a fan of tomato soup. I always thought it was kind of disgusting because you know, my, like you get those Campbell tomato, nothing wrong with Campbell's. My husband loves it. My daughter loves it. So, um, soup, but I don't know. I just, uh, I just didn't have a lot of flavor to it. So, um, I was really hesitant to try this soup whenever I did make it for the first time for my husband. Cause I'm like, I don't want no tomato basil soup. Um, and so I made it for him and he's like, oh my gosh, this is so good. And I was smelling it and it was amazing. And I loved it. I mean, I absolutely loved it. Um, we had a little bit left over that we threw in the freezer. Um, and then what I ended up doing one night, I was just home alone. So I just threw that with a little bit of pasta. Um, and then um, I had a little pasta that night with the tomato soup as the sauce in it. So it works for that too. So, but anyway, so I'm going to show you how hard this is. And, and you guys just better hang on because uh, you might want to take notes. It's so hard. Okay, so we're going to be using our deluxe cooking blender. You guys ready to go? Okay, I went ahead and turned it on. First tip, turn it on. Let's take your lid off. And then we're just going to go from there. I'm going to be looking at the soup recipe. It actually comes in a little cookbook, the cooking guide that comes with it. You can tell mine is like very well loved at all, uh, completely. I just use it like crazy. It's like, like falling apart because I use it all the time. Um, so anyway, so we're basically on 21 and this is the soup area. And this one here, they do have um, beet soup, cauliflower soup, mushroom bisque soup, potato cheddar soup, potato cheddar soup. Yeah, I said that right. And then sweet potato soup and the tomato basil soup. Okay, so we're just basically gonna just follow the directions. First thing, a fourth a cup of um, water or broth. Okay, so I have a little bit of broth here, fourth a cup, dump that in. You just wanna kinda go in, in order, just in case something's thick here, but you want that water down at the bottom. That's the main thing. And then we're gonna add in seasoning, a teaspoon of salt, which I have right here. So we're gonna add our salt in, okay, check. We're gonna add two Roma tomatoes, which I have that. I actually cut the top off one. Let me cut the top off the other one just to cut that inside part off. Um, so we're gonna cut that out. Got a little hole there. And then here's our tomatoes, right? But we're gonna go ahead and actually, I'm just gonna quarter them um, just so they're not completely chunked, but I don't know, maybe it's just probably me, but we're just gonna quarter them, okay? Just so that way it's not just some whole thing. Making a mess with my tomatoes. One of those messy cooks is a good cook, right? That's what I go by. Messy cook is a good cook. Messy cook is a good cook. Okay. All right, so we have that. All right, let's go back to our directions again. So we have our tomatoes. It says one can of whole tomatoes, which I was at the store yesterday, and for some reason I couldn't find it, a 28, 28 ounce can. So I actually just got two cans of the diced tomatoes. So I made sure I didn't get any extra flavoring with it because I want, the soup is flavorful enough. It doesn't need extra um, flavoring. So we're gonna just go ahead and use the diced tomatoes. I figured whole tomatoes, that's close, right? Diced is whole, it's close. So we're gonna add that in here. Okay, and using our can opener, by the way, um, I love our can opener. The new style has the one handle. Um, the difference between the new style and the older style, um, the older style had two handles, so it was either on or off your can, right? And those of you guys that have the old style, you know what I'm talking about. Well, what happened is, it's been years and years that this has happened now, but industry, this used to be a standard thickness. That lip on your can used to be a standard thickness. So all cans had the same lip. And our can opener looked, worked great for the, during that time when it was a standard thing. But then the manufacturers started changing the, the, the cans. Um, and so some of the lips got really, really thin. So our can opener was either on or off, if that makes sense. So if you have an older can opener that works great, super, you just have the right cans. But if you have a can opener that's like, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, you can't figure it out, it's probably the can that's messing you up, not the can opener, okay? So that's what I like about this new can opener from Paper Chef, is I don't know if you can see it, but as I turn this, it actually rotates this down. 
to the cutting wheel, okay? So basically, whatever, whatever thickness that lip is, it's gonna attach itself to that lip. Um, so you just put this right up against it. There's a behind view, so I'm just gonna set it right there and just start turning. It'll automatically grab your pan. You just spin around. It's really, really, really easy to turn. It's not hard at all. Spin around and you'll kind of feel it give. There it went, okay? So then you do, you go backwards and it just pops it right off, okay? And then you use your thumb press. So you push your thumb and it controls this little guy here, okay? So you just go to the very top of your lip. Don't go down because you're gonna be grabbing the bottom of your lid um, that's on the can. So just go to the very top and that's how you pull that out. There's a little glue on that can too. And they, that way the lid's not sharp, neither is your can. Okay, so a lot of those safety can openers that you see on the, the market today, they cut underneath the lip, which means the lid's not sharp, but your can is really sharp. So this way, neither your can nor your lid is sharp because it actually uncrimps right in the middle of that seam. All right, little, little can thing. So we're gonna add another can of our diced tomatoes. Okay, let's see, go back to the recipe. A medium onion, half of it. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this guy in half. I cut the tops and the bottoms off already. We're gonna cut this in half. I'm gonna just take that outside peeling off because who wants to see that first side peeling? This one might be a little bit smaller. Maybe I'll use the other one. Maybe I'll use this other one. This one's a little, uh, eh. See, how much onion do we want? I'll just use this side. It's already cut. Okay, let's cut. And I'm just gonna cut it in quarters again. Okay, and again, look at this. Oh, <laughs> I didn't have to cut it up. And then it calls for two garlic cloves. My garlic was really small, so I went ahead and put four cloves of garlic. Isn't this tough, guys? This is like really hard work. Okay, so at that point, I've added our liquid, I've added our seasoning, I've added our vegetables. And so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and turn this on and put it on this soup setting. So you're just gonna put your lid on here, make sure it's all closed, make sure your top is closed because that would be bad if you had an open top, that would be really bad. Okay, so you have this on here, it's nice and tight. We're gonna go ahead and turn our dial and they have different settings. I don't know if you can see it from there, but just trust me if you don't. It says smoothie, alternate melt, grind, heated wash. Yes, a heated wash cycle. If you didn't know, this thing cleans itself. Yeah. Um, then it has soup, heated puree, jam, and sauce. So I'm just gonna turn this till I hit my soup. And then watch this, you guys ready for this? That's it, <laughs> I'm done. Lose my bar for a while. So it's gonna stop, start chopping everything up. And the cool thing about our blender, which is different than a lot of those cooking blenders on the market today, a lot of the cooking blenders on the market actually heat by the friction of your, your uh, grinder wheel, your little, your blades. So that's how they heat up, is by the friction of those blades moving. Okay, ours actually has a heating element in it. So that, it doesn't require the blades to get it hot. Um, it actually gets hot because of the heating element. So right now, this tells me my temperature is at 75 degrees. And I know it, it's popping up even as we talk, because I know when I looked a second ago, it was in the 70, low 70s. Um, so anyway, it's already 78, 79. So this is already starting to heat up. It's not hot yet, but I tell you what, it will get hot. Um, this is glass, not plastic. So it is glass, so it is meant for, for cooking, all right? So look, 81, so you can sit here and watch it. Um, but it's gonna basically go ahead and cook, it's gonna heat up, and then it's gonna grind all this up. And it will take, it really depends on how, how cold it is to begin with, but it's probably gonna take me maybe a half hour, um, and, and it'll go from there. And then, about half hour, 20 minutes, half hour. So we're gonna let this go. And then what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna come back and it's gonna beep at me when it's done. And it's gonna have the word add, A-D-D, right here on my screen. So it's so simple because it tells me what to do. So at that point, when it says add, I'm gonna take my basil, which I had to actually buy basil because my basil plant, of course, did not make it through winter. Um, in one winter, I should have saved some of it and I just didn't get a chance to. Um, so we're gonna um, use a basil and it says a fourth a cup. I've already washed this off. So I could probably throw the stems in there and everything, but I'm just weird that way, I don't. So I'm just gonna throw this stuff in here. 
I know, I should probably just throw the stones in there because it's just gonna get all chopped up. So this is gonna get all chopped up and pulverized and it's gonna mix into our soup and that's it. I'll be back in just a couple seconds. It'll seem like seconds, but it'll actually be about 20 minutes. Bye. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually move that up a little bit. I'm going to take this off, our little top, and you can tell, look at that. I don't know if you guys can see that steam, but man, it is hot. It is steamy. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to add our basil to it, right? Because, you know, why chop it up, right? So we're going to add our basil, our fresh basil. We're going to put the lid back on, close it, because we don't want no surprises. And then I'm basically going to just pulse it. Oh, and the dogs are, oh, I need to cancel. And. And basically, pulse up that fresh basil, and we are good to go. So um, I will show you. Actually, let me just go ahead and show you now. Look at all that steam, guys. Look at all that. Okay. And someone just got home for dinner, so. There you go. And he's probably be really excited about this. But look, I don't know if you can see all that, but there's your fresh tomato basil soup. Okay. I will show you a picture all served up. Yum. Yum. So, again, soup made in the deluxe cooking blender is totally amazing. Um, you could do so much more with this. Um, there's like a bunch of recipes. Um, it is on sale this month for hosts, so you can actually get it for 60% off, which is amazing. Um, but usually you can get it any month for half price when you have your own show. So if you wanna do a show, let me know. I will get you hooked up. I'm doing a lot of shows virtually right now, um, but, um, but we can get you hooked up. All right, so again, bon appetit. I'm gonna go have me some fancy tomato basil soup. And I'll see you guys later.